Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be doing some unboxing. I'm gonna actually go into the barn and get a pile that's been slowly growing and bring it right out here into the shade on the grass. It's just such a beautiful day out here today. We've had this pile that's been slowly building uh, from Gardener Supply and Gekka, and I'm not even sure what's in all the boxes except for one. Um, I did open the largest box because I was kind of curious as to what it was, and you guys are gonna love it. But many of you guys saw that pile in the background of one of our recent videos. I'm not even sure which one, and a lot of you guys requested to see what was in them. So that's what we're gonna do today. Let's head to the barn. I'm gonna load all the boxes into the gator and just bring them right out here. So here we are, you can see the pile. That box and all of these boxes right here. I need to unload all my stuff though first. That'll work. So we're gonna start with the gardener supply stuff first because this is the box that I opened. The only one of all the boxes I just loaded up that I opened because this is a huge box. Like what could be in here? Well, something awesome, which I'm not gonna actually be able to even show you completely assembled. We'll have to put a picture up on the screen, but it's a called a bowed wall trellis. Let me get it out of here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see through this plastic yet, but it's a um, it's for a flat wall, like a big expanse of flat wall. And it's kind of like a version of our Panacea giant trellises that we have the three of them on our kitchen, kind of our kitchen entrance wall. But this one is bowed, so it bows out and then it has kind of this hood. So I'm thinking, I wonder if uh, a spot on the west side, like maybe toward all that junk, all like the, I don't know. So you'll see this appear, I'm sure, later on in a project either here or at my parents' house or somewhere. We'll find a location where it looks really pretty. All right, next box. I know what this is. These are shelves. Okay, hold on. I think we need to open a different box. These are like accessories to something else. This is for the Hartley. Hold on. I just got through saying, I don't know what's in any of these boxes. Well, I kind of do now, <laughs> kind of remember. So this is a lattice plant stand, a rectangular shaped one. And then this is the quarter round lattice plant stand. Let me get all of these open and assembled. And then I can show you, these are uh, little, little trays to go on top. So anyway, this might take me a moment. The lattice plant stands. This is the lattice plant stand rectangle and then lattice plant stand quarter round and then these are trays and these are optional um, so that you can have like built-in saucers on your plant stands. I think that is really awesome and the reason why I thought that this was so great was because our Hartley Botanic greenhouse, I mean I think the walls, Aaron, like like two and a half feet, two and a, two and a half feet is all? Three maybe? I wanted to have a plant stand that I knew would be below the glass level um, so that I could, I don't know, it seemed a little bit more versatile that way than having one come up and kind of like mar the, the uh, look of the, the greenhouse. I don't know. And the fact that this is three pieces rather than just one full piece means that I could use one of these in one corner if I wanted and then another one in a, the totally opposite side of the greenhouse. Um, so anyway, I'm really excited about it. They were pretty easy to put together. Aaron put together one of the quarter rounds so that it didn't take me all day um, to do it. And Benjamin now, oops, you have your own tool. Are you fixing it? Let me show you how to use that. You use it on this right here. This right there. Yeah. 
Anyway, so I don't think I'm gonna unbox the rest of the saucers, you kind of get the picture. I've got more of these for this side and then rectangular ones for this one, um, just because I want to keep them nice until the greenhouse is ready. So anyway, this is super exciting to me. And you can also get these um, separately. So if you just want a corner stand, you can just get a corner stand uh, and so forth. Okay, this is the last box from Gardner Supply right here. Oh my. This looks like it requires assembly as well. Uh-huh. Crop protection tent right there. Three season plant protection tent. It's a three by six, which I have a four by eight. And you might remember seeing it. I did show it in a couple videos and I slipped it over the top of my three by six raised bed. And I showed it in a couple videos because I had some radishes and greens in there from last fall. And it's got like three sections. It's all one piece, um, like one structure, but there were three sections in the cover where you could zip it up and like access what's in your raised bed. So this is one that will actually fit my raised bed, which is really fun. And then it has a greenhouse cover. So this right here, and then it also has an insect cover right here so like right now we don't need the greenhouse cover anymore because it's so um it's getting so nice out but it's getting to a time of year where if you deal with certain insect pests on certain crops this still allows light to enter but it just protects your stuff from insects getting to it like at all so that's really nice that you can use the same tent for multiple different reasons and seasons and i am not going to put this together today because there are a ton of parts and I don't need it quite yet. So I don't really want to take up the floor space with this. This is nicely packaged. I would never get it back in this. In fact, I probably shouldn't have unfolded this because I probably won't get it back in the box as nicely as it came. Shoot. But I'm sure that you're going to see this at some point this season. All right, guys, sorry about the abrupt cut. It is the next day, but Samantha kind of needed me, so we stopped filming. And uh, anyway, I just have this one last box to get into. This is the box from Gekka, who they've sent us out things before, uh, hose wands, quick connects, uh, hose end accessories, all kinds of different stuff. And I have no idea what they have sent in this box. So it should be, you don't either? Aaron doesn't know what's in here either. Usually you have a little bit of an idea. I never do, but. I thought we already had all their stuff, so maybe they've got some new stuff. Oh. First off, there's a little note. Hi, Laura, Aaron, Benjamin, and Samantha. Here are some additional Gekka goodies to keep your watering going strong. Note the pink foam in honor of Samantha. Oh, cute. <laughs> this is Samantha foam right here. Oh my, okay. Let me just try to tip this a little bit so you can see the presentation here because that's some intense foam cutting. Look at this. So it says two long watering wands, one for Laura, one for Erin. Nice. Two shorty watering wands, one for Benjamin and one for Samantha. You know the thing I really love about their watering wands on the ones that we're already using out in the garden is this right here. See how that rotates? Not all of them do that. And if you want to try to rotate it, you have to like kind of, um, it doesn't rotate here. You have to um, like twist your hose around and sometimes it comes unhooked and starts spraying uh, or unfastened. Uh, what is that? Unfastened, unscrewed, unscrewed from the hose. <laughs> anyway, I really like the whole um, swivel feature. It has made things a little bit easier. Okay, so that's layer one. Boy, somebody went to a lot of like, went, a lot of trouble oh getting these all labeled second layer down see how they've labeled everything i love that <laughs> okay one rectangular sprinkle with all brass <laughs> what i did yeah. i said sprinkler oh did you sound like sprinkle yeah benjamin calls sprinkler sprinkles yeah. i'm gonna go watch the sprinkles mom <laughs> I don't think I called it that, but if I did, it's a Benjaminism. Okay, one rectangular sprinkler with all brass nozzles and all metal base, adjustable up to 3,600 square feet. Check out the nozzle cleaner on the end. Okay, so this is it right here. Two microfine watering heads with quick clean out face plates. The face plate's right here. So you can unscrew this on the end. And then, oh yeah. Wait, does this come off? Yeah. Then you can clean them. That's really nice because they do get junked up on occasion. And then you'll start getting like a errant spray, like one that's stronger than the rest of them. Okay, so we've got two of those. 
This is for a kinder and gentler watering pant pattern. Good for seedlings, I imagine. Two mini spray heads to get under and approach your more sensitive friends. So little ones you can add to the end instead of having a big wand. 10 tap plugs to retrofit all your existing wand sprayers until, the, until they fail you. So that's what these look like. They're like one end of a quick connect is what it looks like to me. Tap plugs, okay? And then two standard sprayers for general cleanup or water fights. I wanna take this out of the box. All right. So this end right here is what you screw into the end of your hose. And then this right here is your quick connect. So you just draw that down and put it over that end like that. Let's say that you've got your, your water wand on the end of your hose and you're watering away, and then you decide that you want to switch to a sprinkler. Well, you can do this, take that end off, and then go like that. Whoop. Then go like that on the end of your hose, and that way you don't have to like unscrew anything. So it looks like there is right here a flow control, and then right here you can um, adjust how far you want it to spray. So, I mean, there's a myriad of different patterns. You can have it, or different, yeah, kind of patterns. You can have it go less distance, or you can have it, you know, go further out, that sort of thing. And then this is your clean out, I'm guessing, right? Check out the nozzle cleaner on the end. Oh, it's a nozzle, so you can go like this, and then... Oh, for her water. Oh, that's awesome. That will lengthen the life of our sprinkler, that's for sure. And then the end of these right here, I'll show you on the water wand, like in terms of switching out the end, whoops, switching out the end here, it's a little bit different. So when you take this off, well, in fact, let me put it toward you so maybe you can see. It comes off like that. It's not a, like a threaded thing. And then you can take whatever end you want. And this, this is a bad angle for me. There we go. And put it on like that. And then this one, like that. I've got a couple different brands of water wands that I use around here. I have the gecko ones that they sent out last time and then a few others. Um, the best ones are the ones that have this like thumb control right here, rather than like a trigger or um, uh, like oh, a, squeeze. a squeeze handle. Yeah. Um, and usually the squeeze handle, like there's a little metal loop that you can like have it held up, but then it's a total pain. Then you have to hold it and then take the metal loop off in order for it to release. Um, and those always tend to break down faster for me. Um, they always start to leak quicker and they're way harder on my wrist. And this one's way easier, this type right here. I think I want to take this out to our back formal garden because that's where we struggle with dry grass issues the most. And we'll test this out and I'm going to show you kind of how it works. We're in the back formal garden where we do deal with some water issues. Uh, you can't really see them now because it's not super hot out yet, but usually in the middle of the summer, you can see some really stressed out spots of grass and we really need to redo this area. Um, so we're always pulling sprinklers. This is one of the spots right here. So I played around with this a little bit and here's what I have learned. First off, this right here uh, controls the amount of water that's flowing out, which will control the width a little bit. This right here, um, shows you kind of what pattern, is the pattern the right word? Yeah. Like it kind of forces this right here, the water spray to stay within this little window mm -hmm. of space. You can have it all the way open so that the whole thing rotates from this side all the way to this side. So it's doing a giant square. So I suppose like it's perfect for back here because we need it to hit a wide area. But if you had a really narrow area, like let's say, let's take it over here. This is a narrow strip of grass, right? So. We don't want it to hit like into the driveway because that'll just cause more weeds. So if I wanted to water this strip, I would put the sprinkler instead of this direction, I would put it this direction and put that all the way up so that the fan is just staying straight up and watering in a really narrow, long shape instead of you know doing this thing and rotating back and forth, if that makes sense. So let me put it back over here and turn it on so you can at least see it. I think I've got it on max flow and the biggest section it can hit. <laughs> yep, there it goes. See how it comes all the way down and it hits hitting in between. Oh, it's even hitting the edge of the boxwood hedge right here. So I'm gonna go in there in a second when I won't get all wet and I'm gonna make the window right up top. 
So that right there is the most narrow you can do it. It kind of shoots out about eight feet is where it ends up hitting. So I've got it on max water flow right now. If I neck it down all the way, it probably reduces. I just saw it come in just a few feet. So the width kind of comes in just a little bit, uses a little bit less water. I think I would prefer if the flow control turned it all the way down to nothing so that you could really, um, I don't know, you'd have more options, but it'll be interesting to try this out this summer and see how it works back here for us. Um, but you guys, there are a ton of machines up in our front yard. I'm just hearing them and seeing them move around. We should run up there real quick so I can give you a quick update because I started scraping the grass out of the lawn today. Oh my goodness. How is it somehow looking already better than it did with grass there? Come take a look, you guys. So first off, the sidewalk is gone right here. And this was the pink, white, pink, white number. And they just came in and started scraping. It was really interesting to watch them scrape the grass away so quick compared to, I was thinking like, we're gonna have to rent a sod lifter and this is gonna be a huge pain. Uh, but you can see like, especially over here, where the two pieces of property are gonna start to blend together and be one big space instead of this more narrow, kind of shallow front yard. So here's the plan. The sidewalk, you can see where the old one was. The new one will be a bit wider. It'll come out and swing out this way. This is all gonna be flower bed. So no grass on this side, just deep, beautiful, whatever. You know, something beautiful right there. And then on this side, there's going to be a big flower bed that starts over there where that flower bed starts. And it's going to swing around and come around the left side, well, the left side as you're looking out of the sidewalk, and it'll meet it back over that way. And then all of this will be grass and shade trees. And there'll be more big flower beds over here. And this is one of the last things we have to move right here, which the guys said that they could come in and like scrape out kind of a big square around the tree and then come in easily with their, I don't know, I don't know what piece of machinery they're gonna use, but they said they could scoop it out with a lot of roots because I planted this, I think three years ago, Quans and Cherry, it's gorgeous. Um, and I really don't wanna lose it. So anyway, they thought that they could do that very easily and then they can dig me a big hole out on the new property and we can pop it in there and that way, because right now it does look odd to have this one right in front of the crab apple um, now that everything else is gone, but oh my gosh. <sighs> Well, here's a shot from the other direction uh, and there will be another walkway coming from right in the middle of those two beams on the end. It'll come out and it'll swing and meet Versailles. And then right here on this side of the walkway, all of this from about me over is gonna also be flower bed. Um, so this is a very shady area. We've always struggled with grass in this spot and it will go all the way out the flower bed well, like this will be flower bed all the way out uh, to like right in between those first two maples there. So it'll provide us with a ton of opportunity to plant up here. I'm really looking forward to it. So here's the steps. We're gonna get the tree moved. Um, they're going to finish removing everything else from this area, all the debris, and then they're gonna level the whole area out. Then we will come in and do a new sprinkler system and then we can seed it with grass. So one step closer, it's actually, even though it looks like mayhem, it's like very exciting to me because I feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel now. Uh, anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you Gardener Supply and Gecka for sending out those things. I'm excited to use them and we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.